Linear B is a syllabic script that was used for writing Mycenaean Greek, the earliest attested form of Greek. The script predates the Greek alphabet by several centuries. The oldest Mycenaean writing dates to about 1450 BC. It is descended from the older Linear A, an undeciphered earlier script used for writing the Minoan language, as is the later Cypriot syllabary, which also recorded Greek. Linear B, found mainly in the palace archives at Gnosis, Cydonia, Pylos, Thebes and Mycenae, disappeared with the fall of Mycenaean civilization during the Late Bronze Age collapse. The succeeding period, known as the Greek Dark Ages, provides no evidence of the use of writing. It is also the only one of the Bronze Age Aegean scripts to have been deciphered, by English architect and self taught linguist Michael Ventris. Linear B consists of around 87 syllabic signs and over 100 ideographic signs. These ideograms or signifying signs symbolize objects or commodities. They have no phonetic value and are never used as word signs in writing a sentence. The application of Linear B appears to have been confined to administrative contexts. In all the thousands of clay tablets, a relatively small number of different hands have been detected, 45 in Pylos west coast of the Peloponnese, in southern Greece and 66 in Gnosis Crete. It is possible that the script was used only by a guild of professional scribes who served the central palaces. Once the palaces were destroyed, the script disappeared. Topic. Script Linear B has roughly 200 signs, divided into syllabic signs with phonetic values and ideograms with semantic values. The representations and naming of these signs have been standardized by a series of international colloquia starting with the first in Paris in 1956. After the third meeting in 1961 at the Wingspread Conference Center in Racine, Wisconsin, a standard proposed primarily by Emmett L. Bennett, Jr. (1918–2011) became known as the Wingspread Convention, which was adopted by a new organization, the Comité International Permanent des Etudes Mycenaeennes (CIPEM), affiliated in 1970 by the Fifth Colloquium with UNESCO. Colloquia continue. The 13th occurred in 2010 in Paris. Many of the signs are identical or similar to those in Linear A. However, Linear A encodes an as yet unknown language, and it is uncertain whether similar signs had the same phonetic values. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Syllabic signs. The grid developed during decipherment by Michael Ventris and John Chadwick of phonetic values for syllabic signs is shown below. Initial consonants are in the leftmost column, vowels are in the top row beneath the title. The transcription of the syllable it may not have been pronounced that way is listed next to the sign along with Bennett's identifying number for the sign preceded by an asterisk as was Ventris and Chadwick's convention. In cases where the transcription of the sign remains in doubt, Bennett's number serves to identify the sign. The signs on the tablets and ceilings often show considerable variation from each other and from the representations below. Discovery of the reasons for the variation and possible semantic differences is a topic of ongoing debate in Mycenaean studies. Topic. Special and unknown signs In addition to the grid, the first edition of documents contained a number of other signs termed homophones because they appeared at that time to resemble the sounds of other syllables and were transcribed accordingly, PA-2 and PA-3 were presumed homophonous to PA. Many of these were identified by the second edition and are shown in the special values below. The second edition relates, it may be taken as axiomatic that there are no true homophones. Quote, the unconfirmed identifications of asterisk 34 and asterisk 35 as I-2 and I-3 were removed. PA-2 became QA. Other values remain unknown, mainly because of scarcity of evidence concerning them. Note that asterisk 34 and asterisk 35 are mirror images of each other but whether this graphic relationship indicates a phonetic one remains unconfirmed. In recent times, CIPEM inherited the former authority of Bennett and the Wingspread Convention in deciding what signs are confirmed and how to officially represent the various sign categories. In editions of Mycenaean texts, the signs whose values have not been confirmed by CIPEM are always transcribed as numbers preceded by an asterisk e.g., asterisk 64. 
CIPEM also allocates the numerical identifiers, and until such allocation, new signs or obscured or mutilated signs are transcribed as a bullet point enclosed in square brackets. Topic spelling and pronunciation The signs are approximations each may be used to represent a variety of about 70 distinct combinations of sounds, within rules and conventions. The grid presents a system of monosyllabic signs of the type 5, cv. Clarification of the 14 or so special values tested the limits of the grid model, but Chadwick in the end concluded that even with the ramifications, the syllabic signs can unexceptionally be considered monosyllabic. Possible exceptions, Chadwick goes on to explain, include the two diphthongs, I and O, as in I ku pi ti jo, for Iguptios, Igyptius Egyptian, and O k wa, for Aguas, Agias, Agias. However, a diphthong is by definition two vowels united into a single sound and therefore might be typed as just v thus, ry, as in, e ry wo, for eliwan, elayan is of the type 105. Diphthongs are otherwise treated as two monosyllables, rou ra, for aurorans, accusative plural of aurori, tamarisk trees, of the types cv and v lengths of vowels and accents are not marked. twe, two, dwe, dwo, NWA and the more doubtful SWI and SWA may be regarded as beginning with labialized consonants rather than two consonants, even though they may alternate with a two sign form O dot TWE ta and O dot we ta for O dot twenta, a CY jo and a SWI jo for a SWIOS. Similarly, RIA, RIO and TYA begin with palatalized consonants rather than two consonants T RI YA for TRJA. The one sign Chadwick tags as the exception to the monosyllabic rule is private, but this he attributes to a development private linear B does not consistently distinguish between voiced and unvoiced stop consonants except in the dental series and between aspirated and unaspirated stops even when these distinctions are phonemic in Mycenaean Greek. For example, pate is pater, pater pa si is phasi, fesi p on the other hand sometimes does not represent like in the beginning of the following word beta, basilis basilis, meaning in this period court official or local chieftain is qac re u, ko ru is chorus, kor is helmet, ka rawi is gras plural of grace, ko no is skoinos rope. Exceptionally, however, the dentals are represented by a T series and a D series for unvoiced and voiced to so for tosos, tosos or tosos, but do raw for dora, plural of doran, gift. Aspiration, however, is not marked to ra k for thorax, plural of thorax, breastplate. In other cases, aspiration can be marked but is optional. Pute for futter, planter, from phytuo, but fute re for futures, planters. Initial aspiration may be marked only in the case of initial a and rarely, hate ro for hateran masculine hateros, and yet a ni ya for hanii. The J series represents the semivowel equivalent to English, y, and is used word initially and as an intervocalic glide after a syllable ending in i, a jo for ios, a, -I -O -S, a te mi ti jo for artimitios, artimitios. The W series similarly are semivowels used word initially and intervocalically after a syllable ending in U, ku wa no for kuanos, kana blue. The R series includes both the R and L phonemes, t re po for tripos, tripos i.e. tripos and tu re so for tulisos. The Q series is used for monosyllables beginning with a class of consonants that disappeared from classical Greek by regular phonetic change, the labialized velar consonants see under Mycenaean Greek. These had entered the language from various sources, inheritance from Proto-Indo-European, assimilation, borrowing of foreign words, especially names. In Mycenaean they are, k, per gram, and rarely, kh, in names and a few words, a pi qo ro for amphikoloi, amphipoloi qo u ko ro for gukoloi, bukoloi, cowherders, qo i ta for fontes. Some consonants in some contexts are not written, but are understood, word initial s and w before a consonant, as in pay ma for sperma. Sperma seed. Syllable final L, M, N, R, S. Only word final velars are notated by plain writing, a to R O Q O for anthropos, anthropos, human being, person. In the first example, the pay, which was primarily used as its value pay of grid class 105, is being used for SPER, not in that class. This was not an innovative or exceptional use, but followed the stated rules. Similarly, a, being primarily of grid class 5, is being used as an and could be used for al, am, r, and so on. 
Clusters of two or three consonants that do not follow the initial S and W rule are the double consonants, she Ks or X, psi PS and QUS which later did not exist in Classical Greek were represented by the same number of signs of type 105 as the cluster had consonants, ko noso for nosos, ku russo for krusos, kri gold. The consonants were the same as in the cluster. The vowels so introduced have been called empty, null, extra, dead and other terms by various writers as they represent no sound. The sign was not alphabetic, rules governed the selection of the vowel and therefore of the sign. The vowel had to be the same as the one of the first syllable following the cluster or if at the end of the word, preceding, t re po with t instead of ta, te and so on to match re. A rare exception occurs in words formed from wa na ka, wanax, anax Homeric and classical anax, wa na ka te for wanaktai dative, and wa na ka te ro for wanakteros, the adjectival form. Topic: <laughs> Ideograms. Linear B also uses a large number of ideograms. They express the type of object concerned, e.g., a cow, wool, a spear. A unit of measure, they are typically at the end of a line before a number and appear to signify the object the number applies to. Many of the values remain unknown or disputed. Some commodities such as cloth and containers are divided into many different categories represented by distinct ideograms. Livestock may be marked with respect to their sex. The numerical references for the ideograms were originally devised by Ventris and Bennett, divided into functional groups corresponding to the breakdown of Bennett's index. These groups are numbered beginning 100, 110, 120, etc., with some provision of spare numbers for future editions. The official CIPEM numberings used today are based on Ventris and Bennett's numbering, with the provision that three or four letter codes written in small capitals, based on Latin words that seemed relevant at the time, are used where the meanings are known and agreed. Unicode as a version 5.0 encodes 123 linear B ideograms. The ideograms are symbols, not pictures of the objects in question. E.g. one tablet records a tripod with missing legs, but the ideogram used is of a tripod with three legs. In modern transcriptions of linear B tablets, it is typically convenient to represent an ideogram by its Latin or English name or by an abbreviation of the Latin name. Ventris and Chadwick generally used English, Bennett, Latin. Neither the English nor the Latin can be relied upon as an accurate name of the object, in fact, the identification of some of the more obscure objects is a matter of exegesis. <laughs> <laughs> Archives Corpus <laughs> 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 Inscriptions in Linear B have been found on tablets and vases or other objects, they are catalogued and classified by, inter alia, the location of the excavation they were found in. Another 170 inscriptions in Linear B have been found on various vessels, for a total of some 6,058 known inscriptions. The oldest Linear B tablets are probably those from the Room of Chariot Tablets at Gnosis, and date to the latter half of the 15th century BC. The Kafkania pebble, though from an earlier context, is not genuine. The earliest inscription from the mainland is an inscribed clay tablet found at Iklina dating to between 1400 and 1350 BC. It is claimed that a linear B inscription is attested on an amber bead found as far at Bernstorf, in Germany. <laughs> Chronology Timeline of Bronze Age Eastern Mediterranean scripts The Aegean is responsible for many of the early Greek language words that have to do with daily life such as words for tools and items that are seen every day. The sequence and the geographical spread of Cretan hieroglyphs, Linear A, and Linear B, the three overlapping, but distinct, writing systems on Bronze Age Crete, the Aegean Islands, and mainland Greece are summarized as follows. Topic. Timeline of Linear B The main archives for Linear B are associated with these stages of late Minoan and Helotic pottery. Topic. Controversy on the date of the Gnosis tablets The Gnosis archive was dated by Arthur Evans to the destruction by conflagration of about 1400 BC, which would have baked and preserved the clay tablets. 
He dated this event to the LM2 period. This view stood until Carl Blegen excavated the site of ancient Pylos in 1939 and uncovered tablets inscribed in Linear B. They were fired in the conflagration that destroyed Pylos about 1200 BC, at the end of LHIIIB. With the decipherment of Linear B by Michael Ventris in 1952, serious questions about Evans' date began to be considered. Most notably, Blegen said that the inscribed stirrup jars, which are oil flasks with stirrup-shaped handles, imported from Crete around 1200 were of the same type as those dated by Evans to the destruction of 1400. Blegen found a number of similarities between 1200 BC Pylos and 1400 BC Gnosis and suggested the Gnosian evidence be re-examined, as he was sure of the 1200 Pelion date. The examination uncovered a number of difficulties. The Gnosis tablets had been found at various locations in the palace. Evans had not kept exact records. Recourse was had to the day books of Evans' assistant, Duncan Mackenzie, who had conducted the day-to-day -day excavations. There were discrepancies between the notes in the day books and Evans' excavation reports. Moreover, the two men had disagreed over the location and strata of the tablets. The results of the reinvestigation were eventually published by Palmer and Boardman, on the Gnosis tablets. It contains two works, Leonard Robert Palmer's The Find Places of the Gnosis Tablets and John Boardman's The Date of the Gnosis Tablets, representing Blegan's and Evans' views respectively. Consequently, the dispute was known for a time as the Palmer-Boardman dispute. There has been no generally accepted resolution to it yet. Topic. Contents The major cities and palaces used Linear B for records of disbursements of goods. Wool, sheep, and grain were some common items, often given to groups of religious people and to groups of men watching the coastline. The tablets were kept in groups in baskets on shelves, judging by impressions left in the clay from the weaving of the baskets. When the buildings they were housed in were destroyed by fires, many of the tablets were fired. Topic. Discovery and decipherment Topic. Arthur J. Evans' classification of scripts The British archaeologist Arthur Evans, keeper of the Ashmolean Museum, was presented by Greville Chester in 1886 with a sealstone from Crete engraved with a writing he took to be Mycenaean. Heinrich Schliemann had encountered signs similar to these, but had never identified the signs clearly as writing, relating in his major work on Mycenae that, "...of combinations of signs resembling inscriptions I have hitherto only found three or four. In 1893 Evans purchased more seal stones in Athens, verifying from the antiquarian dealers that the stones came from Crete. During the next year he noticed the script on other artifacts in the Ashmolean. In 1894 he embarked for Crete in search of the script. Soon after arrival, at Gnosis he saw the sign of the double axe on an excavated wall, considering this the source of the script. Subsequently, he found more stones being worn by Cretan women as amulets called gallopeters, milk stones, coming from the various ruins. Starting in 1894, Evans published his theories that the signs evidenced various phases in the development of a writing system in the Journal of Hellenic Studies, the first article being, "...primitive pictographs and a pre-Phoenician script from Crete." In these articles Evans distinguished between, "...pictographic writing," and, "...a linear system of writing." He did not explicitly define these terms, causing some confusion among subsequent writers concerning what he meant, but in 1898 he wrote, "...these linear forms indeed consist of simple geometrical figures which unlike the more complicated pictorial class were little susceptible to modification," and "...that the linear or quasi-alphabetic signs were in the main ultimately derived from the rudely scratched line pictures belonging to the infancy of art can hardly be doubted." Meanwhile, Evans began to negotiate for the land purchase of the Gnosis site. He established the Cretan Exploration Fund, with only his own money at first, and by 1896 the fund had purchased one-fourth of Kefala Hill, on which the ruins were located, with first option to buy the rest. However, he could not obtain a Furman excavation permit from the Ottoman government. He returned to Britain. In January 1897, the Christian population of Crete staged its final insurrection against the Ottoman Empire. 
The last Ottoman troops were ferried off the island by the British fleet on December 5, 1898. In that year also, Evans and his friends returned to complete purchase of the site. By this time, the fund had other contributors as well. In 1899, the constitution of a new Cretan Republic went into effect. Once Arthur had received permission to excavate from the local authorities, excavation on the hill began on 23 March 1900. According to Evans' report to the British school at Athens for that year, on April 5, the excavators discovered the first large cache ever of linear B tablets among the remains of a wooden box in a disused terracotta bathtub. Subsequently, caches turned up at multiple locations, including the room of the chariot tablets, where over 350 pieces from four boxes were found. The tablets were 4.5 cm to 19.5 cm long by 1.2 cm to 7.2 cm wide and were scored with horizontal lines over which text was written in about 70 characters. Even in this earliest excavation report, Evans could tell that a certain number of quasi-pictorial characters also occur which seem to have an ideographic or determinative meaning." The excavation was over for that year by June 2. Evans reported, "...only a comparatively small proportion of the tablets were preserved in their entirety." The causes of destruction being rainfall through the roof of the storage room, crumbling of small pieces, and being thrown away by workmen who failed to identify them. A report on September 6 to the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland began to use some of the concepts characteristic of Evans' later thought, Palace of Gnosis, and Palace of Minnows. Appleton's Cyclopedia of American Biography, 1900, notes that Evans took up Stillman's theme that the palace was the labyrinth of mythology in which the half bovine son of King Minnows lurked. In the report, the tablets are now called a linear script, as opposed to the hieroglyphic or conventionalized pictographic script. The linear script has characters that are of a free, upright, European character and seem to have been for the most part syllabic. Evans reasserts the ideographic idea. A certain number are unquestionably ideographic or determinative. The years after 1900 were consumed by excavations at Gnosis and the discovery and study by Evans of tablets, with a projected comprehensive work on Cretan scripts to be called Scripta Manoa. A year before the publication of Volume 1, he began to drop hints that he now believed the linear script was two scripts, to be presented in the forthcoming book. In Scripta Manoa I, which appeared in 1909, he explained that the discovery of the Phaistos disc in July 1908 had caused him to pull the book from the presses so that he could include the disc by permission, as it had not yet been published. On the next page he mentioned that he was also including by permission of Federico Halbher of the Italian mission in Crete unpublished tablets from Hia Triata written in a linear script of Class A. To what degree if any Halbher was responsible for Evans' division of the linear script into class A and class B is not stated. The Gnosis tablets were of class B, so that Evans could have perceived class A only in tablets from elsewhere, and so recently that he needed permission to include the examples. Evans summarized the differences between the two scripts as type or form of script, that is, varieties in the formation and arrangement of the characters. For example, he says, the clay documents belonging to class A show a certain approximation in their forms to those presenting the hieroglyphic inscriptions. The system of numerals is also in some respects intermediate between that of the hieroglyphic documents and that of the linear class B. The first volume covered the hieroglyphic and primitive linear classes. In three parts, the pre-Phoenician scripts of Crete, the pictorial script, and the Phaistos disc. One or two more volumes publishing the Linear A and Linear B tablets were planned, but Evans ran out of time, the project required more than one man could bring to it. For a good many of the years left to him, he was deeply enmeshed in war and politics in the Balkans. When he did return to Gnosis, completion and publication of the palace excavations took priority. His greatest work, Palace of Minnows, came out in 1935. It did include scattered descriptions of tablets. He died in 1941, soon after Nazi forces invaded Crete. The Gnosis tablets had remained in the museum at Heraklion, Crete, where many of them now were missing. 
The unpublished second volume consisted of notes by Evans and plates and fonts created by Clarendon Press. In 1939, Carl Blegen had uncovered the Pylos tablets, pressure was mounting to finish Scripta Manoa II. After Evans' death, Alice Kober, assistant to John Myers and a major transcriber of the Gnosis tablets, prompted Myers to come back from retirement and finish the work. Emmett L. Bennett Jr. added more transcriptions. The second volume came out in 1952 with Evans cited as author and Myers as editor, just before the discovery that Linear B writes an early form of Greek. An impatient Ventress and Chadwick declared, Two generations of scholars had been cheated of the opportunity to work constructively on the problem. <laughs> Early attempts Despite the limited source materials, during this time there were efforts to decipher the newly discovered Cretan script. Australian classicist Florence Stahl published an interpretation of the Phaistos disc in the April 1911 issue of the Burlington Magazine. She followed this with the book A Clue to the Cretan Scripts, published in 1931. Stahl declared all three Cretan script forms to represent early Homeric Greek, and offered her attempts at translations. Also in 1931, F. G. Gordon's Through Basque to Minoan was published by the Oxford University Press. Gordon attempted to prove a close link between the Basque language and Linear B, without lasting success. In 1949, the distinguished professor Bedrek Harazny of Prague published Les Inscriptions Kratises, Essay de Decifferment, a proposed decipherment of the Cretan scripts. Harazny was internationally renowned as the translator of Hittite cuneiform decades previously. His Minoan translations into academic French, proved to be considerably subjective, and incorrect. From the 1930s to 1950s there was correspondence between, and papers published by, various international academic figures. These included Johannes Sundwall, K. D. Katistopoulos, Ernst Sittig and V. I. Georgiev. None of them succeeded with decipherment, yet they added to knowledge and debate. Topic. Alice Kober's triplets. About the same time, Professor Alice Kober studied Linear B and managed to construct grids, linking similar symbols in groups of threes. Kober noticed that a number of Linear B words had common roots and suffixes. This led her to believe that Linear B represented an inflected language, with nouns changing their endings depending on their case. However, some characters in the middle of the words seem to correspond with neither a root nor a suffix. Because this effect was found in other known languages, Kober surmised that the odd characters were bridging syllables, with the beginning of the syllable belonging to the root and the end belonging to the suffix. This was a reasonable assumption, since Linear B had far too many characters to be considered alphabetic and too few to be logographic, therefore, each character should represent a syllable. Dr. Kober also showed that the two-symbol word for total at the end of livestock and personnel lists, had a different symbol for gender. This gender change with one letter, usually a vowel, is most frequent in Indo-European languages. Kober had rejected any speculation on the language represented, preferring painstaking cataloging and analysis of the actual symbols. Topic. Emmett L. Bennett's transcription conventions The convention for numbering the symbols still in use today was first devised by United States Professor Emmett L. Bennett, Jr. Working alongside fellow academic Alice Kober, by 1950 Bennett had deciphered the metrical system, based on his intensive study of Linear B tablets unearthed at Pylos. He was also an early proponent of the idea that Linear A and B represented different languages. Bennett's book The Pylos Tablets became a crucial resource for Michael Ventris, who later described it as a wonderful piece of work. Topic. Michael Ventris' identification as Greek In 1935, the British school at Athens was celebrating its 50th anniversary with an exhibition at Burlington House, London. Among the speakers was Arthur Evans, then 84 years old. The teenaged Michael Ventris was present in the audience. In 1940, the 18-year-old Ventress had an article introducing the Minoan language published in the American Journal of Archaeology, after wartime service as a navigator with RAF Bomber Command, and a post-war year in occupied Germany, he returned to civilian life, and completed qualification as an architect. 
Despite having no university qualification, Ventris continued with his amateur interest in Linear B, corresponding with known scholars, who usually but not always replied. Michael Ventris and John Chadwick performed the bulk of the decipherment of Linear B between 1951 and 1953. At first, Ventris chose his own numbering method, but later switched to Bennett's system. His initial decipherment was achieved using Cobra's classification tables, to which he applied his own theories. Some Linear B tablets had been discovered on the Greek mainland. Noticing that certain symbol combinations appeared only on the tablets found in Crete, he conjectured that these might be names of places on the island. This proved to be correct. Working with the symbols he could decipher from this, Ventris soon unlocked much text and determined that the underlying language of Linear B was in fact Greek. This contradicted general scientific views of the time, and indeed Ventris himself had previously agreed with Evans' hypothesis that Linear B was not Greek. Ventris' discovery was of significance in demonstrating a Greek-speaking Minoan Mycenaean culture on Crete, and thus presenting Greek in writing centuries earlier than had been previously accepted. Chadwick, a university lecturer in ancient Greek philology, helped Ventris develop his decipherment of the text and discover the vocabulary and grammar of Mycenaean Greek. He noted, that any Linear B tablets are written in a language other than Greek still remains to be demonstrated, but that words and usages not exactly paralleled in later Greek occur is both certain and to be expected. But we must not resort to non-Greek whenever we come up against an insoluble problem. Topic Unicode Linear B was added to the Unicode standard in April, 2003 with the release of version 4.0. The Linear B syllabary block is U plus 10,000 U plus 1007F. The Linear B ideograms block is U plus 10080 U plus 100FF. The Unicode block for the related Aegean numbers is U plus 10100 U plus 1013F. Topic see also Aegean civilizations Aegean numerals Linear A Cypro Minoan Syllabary Cypriot Syllabary Proto-Greek Language Topic Notes Topic Sources Topic Bibliography Carpenter, Reese, 1957 Linear B, Phoenix, Volume 11, No. 2 Summer, 1957, pp. 47-62 Chadwick, John 1958. The Decipherment of Linear B Second Edition 1990. Cambridge Up. ISBN 978-0-521-39830-5. Chadwick, John The Mycenaean World. Cambridge Up. ISBN 978-0-521-29037-1. Chadwick, John Linear B and Related Scripts, Reading the Past. Third Impression University of California Press, British Museum. ISBN 978-0-520-06019-7, has the Enkomi clay tablet, circa 1500 BCE, examples of Linear B tablets, and translated, the basic Linear B syllabary, the Cypriot syllabary and discussions thereof, and short sections on Linear A, and the Phaistos disc. Fox, Margolet 2013. The Riddle of the Labyrinth, The Quest to Crack an Ancient Code. Echo. ISBN 978-0062228833. Levin, Saul The Linear B Decipherment Controversy Re-Examined. State University of New York Press. OCLC 288842. McDorman, Richard E. Language and the Ancient Greeks and on the Decipherment of Linear B. A Pair of Essays. ISBN 978-0-9839112-3-4. Palima, Thomas G., Unlocking the Secrets of Ancient Writing, The Parallel Lives of Michael Ventris and Linda Shale and the Decipherment of Mycenaean and Mayan Writing, University of Texas at Austin, 11th International Mycenological Colloquium, 2000. Robinson, Andrew The Story of Writing. Paperback Edition 1999. Thames and Hudson. ISBN 978-0-500-28156-7. Chapter 6, Linear B, pp 108-119, discusses Arthur Evans, his work, The Cypriot Clues, The Syllabary, Alice Cober, The Grid, and a sample tablet transliterated, and translated into English. Robinson, Andrew The Man Who Deciphered Linear B, The Story of Michael Ventris 2002, Thames and Hudson ISBN 0500510776 Singh, Simon 2000. The Code Book. Anchor. 
ISBN 978-0-385-49532-5, for a general outline of the Linear B deciphering story, from Schliemann to Chadwick. Ventress, Michael Work Notes on Minoan Language Research and Other Unedited Papers. Edizioni dell'Atonio 1988 Roma. Ventress, Michael, Chadwick, John Documents in Mycenaean Greek 2nd ed. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-08558-8. Ventress, Michael, Chadwick, John Evidence for Greek Dialect in the Mycenaean Archives, The Journal of Hellenic Studies, Vol. 73, 1953, pp. 84-103. Topic further reading Bakker, Egbert J., ed. 2010. A Companion to the Ancient Greek Language. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell. Chadwick, John, 1958. The Decipherment of Linear B. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. Christidis, Anastasios Foivos, ed. 2007. A History of Ancient Greek, From the Beginnings to Late Antiquity. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. Colvin, Stephen C. 2007. A Historical Greek Reader, Mycenaean to the Koine. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Hooker, J. T. 1980. Linear B, An Introduction. Bristol, UK, Bristol Classical Press. Horrocks, Geoffrey, 2010. Greek, A History of the Language and Its Speakers. 2nd ed. Oxford, Wiley Blackwell. Morpurgo Davies, Anna, and Eve Duhu, eds. 1985. Linear B, A 1984 Survey. Louvain, Belgium, Peters. 2008. A Companion to Linear B, Mycenaean Greek Texts and Their World. Volume 1. Louvain, Belgium, Peters. Palaima, Thomas G. 1988. The Development of the Mycenaean Writing System, in Texts, Tablets and Scribes. Edited by J. P. Olivier and T. G. Palaima, 269-342. Suplementos of Minos 10. Salamanca, Spain, Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Scientificas. Palmer, Leonard R. 1980. The Greek Language. London, Faber and Faber. Ventress, Michael, and John Chadwick, 2008. Documents in Mycenaean Greek, 2nd ed. Cambridge, UK, Cambridge University Press. Topic external links Ager, Simon, 1998-2009. Linear B. Omniglot. Retrieved 6 January 2009. Google Noto Fonts, Beautiful and Free Fonts for All Languages, Linear B. Google. Aurora, Federico, Haug, Dag Trigvi Truslu. Damos, Database of Mycenaean at Oslo, et al. University of Oslo. Fox, Margolet. Alice E. Kober, 43, Lost to History No More. New York Times, the 11th of May 2013. Retrieved 13 May 2013. Linear B at Curly Linear B Online Transliterator Low, Lawrence, 1996 to 2005. Linear B. Ancientscripts.com. Retrieved the 5th of January 2009. McCready, David, Weiss, Mimi. Gallery of Unicode Fonts. Linear B Syllabary. Wazoo, Japan. Retrieved the 11th of January 2009. Owens, Dr. Gareth, 2005 to 2008. Didalika, Scripts and Languages of Minoan and Mycenaean Crete in English and Greek. Technological Educational Institute of Crete. Retrieved 9 January 2009. Paleolexicon Word Study Tool of Ancient Languages, including Linear B. Paleolexicon.com. Paulima, Thomas G., A Linear B Tablet from Heidelberg, Université de Liege Paulima, Thomas G., Pope, Elizabeth I., Riley III, F. Kent 2000. The Parallel Lives of Michael Ventris and Linda Shale and the Decipherment of Mycenaean and Mayan Writing PDF. Austin, University of Texas. ISBN 978-0-9649410-4-5. Retrieved 13 January 2009. Palmer, Dr. Michael M. 2002-2009. The Linear B Syllabary. Chapel Hill, N.C., Greek-language.com. Raymore, K. A. 2012. Linear B Transliterations. Minoan Linear A and Mycenaean Linear B Dediterranean. Rudder, Jeremy B. 1996. The Prehistoric Archaeology of the Aegean. Hanover, N. H., The Foundation of the Hellenic World, Dartmouth College. Archived from the original on 1 January 2009. 
Retrieved 5 January 2009.